Hi guys, uh, Ken here. This is a video made primarily for the uh, Mesa team. Um, uh, this is uh, my B2 and what happened is I took out my radio and I'm actually donating this to a friend of mine who is in love with this plane who wants to uh, who wants it for himself. So it's got a Spectrum radio in it now and I didn't have a, a long enough uh, servo extensor to get the thing in here. Uh, plus I only had one so I had to stick it in, over here in one of the uh, one of the air intake uh, spots. Now originally this thing had servos that went in here but I found out the Spectrum radios they don't have a, lo a lot of control as far as increasing the amount of throw that the um, that the servos have so the full range of the of the servos was about 25 percent less than my um, than my own radio the Airtronics uh, so I had to opt with these. Originally, these had the uh, the rotating ones, uh, the rotating uh, Dave Powers uh, type of um, control, you know, linkage that the wire just goes directly into here and into here. So I was thinking of making that as an option, and because of that, um, I had a little gutter right here that I placed where um, right in this gutter is where the uh, is where that uh, wire went, you know, the control wire. Now. I found out that um, this plane flies a lot better if it's got a much lower profile in the front. So these are now about half an inch sm shorter and smaller. Uh, this is like about another three quarters of an inch shorter also. Um, inside of here, when you put this thing together, uh, you can see I just kind of have magnets right here and magnets on the bottom side of the canopy. so. Uh, it, may, it just uh, it just sort of clicks into place right there, and I've never really had it come off, so it comes up pretty good. This front over here, I actually had to put some duct tape because it was a little tail heavy, and I used a lot of tape in the front to reinforce it, plus give it a little bit of weight in the in the nose. Um, so this battery piece, and out of laziness, I didn't cut it out. Uh, the model I was uh, I was going to send over to you, and you can see I made a bunch of cutouts over here. The only thing I couldn't get was this this little center cutout here. So if you guys can figure out how to make that, it's basically this bottom plate. And what I did is I cut this off at the top, and I moved it down a little bit lower. So it ended up being this little half piece, and that's what that's what that looks like. Um, the uh, dragging elevons over here, you notice it's a sort of modified here, but you know this isn't really scale looking, and I just did it because. Uh, I had lots of extra foam left and uh, I just decided to throw it on but it's just going to come straight out like that there's going to be about a 45 degree angle you know to create the drag and this little triangular piece right there that's the little 45 degree spacer that's going to go inside yeah inside the dragging elevon right there so you can see that spacer right there All right that's 45 degrees uh, the way it goes up like right 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 over here it's got um, a little bit of up trim, you know, uh, in order to fly straight. And um, what else is there? Uh, the prop, you know, the, don't get don't get this aluminum thing. This is a really hokey, cheesy aluminum thing, and I had to do all kinds of stuff to reinforce it. So I would I would stick with the standard X mount on on a foam block or or any type of a wooden block that was in here because it's going to be a lot more sturdy. This thing, when I, I mean, when I when I really crank on it, can sometimes start tweaking the the aluminum around. So I actually had to reinforce it with all kinds of plastic glue and and, and wood sticks and dowels. Uh, the you know the vortex generators, they're a little bit smaller. I made them, and they, I don't think it'll need as much uh, tail dragging if the uh, the nose and the canopy are a little bit lower profile, so that the wind can kind of cut cut into it. Um, I found out the bigger that these are, you know, the more it has a tendency to sort of pitch the, the tail end sideways. So uh, I'm hoping that the less drag in the nose will end up working. The canopy is a bit smaller, and like I said, I made everything in the front smaller. The canopy is even smaller, and this is going to be sunk in lower. This piece right here, you know, is this thing over here. So uh, this sort of just follows the canopy, and you can notice that. I mean, this thing is a whole whole thing is full right here. Um, 
over here I actually cut off the tail end and I found out that I just wanted an open space back here so that it have a little bit of a uh, air exhaust to cool off some of the electronics inside and the battery you know? uh, the bottom part is I do have a carbon spar running through this one only because this whole plane I took the paper off of and let me see papers off of it this piece is this bottom reinforcement plate right here okay this uh, is, is sort of sandwiching you can see the carbon spar between the wings alright now the wings finally you can see where it's, it's kind of thin right here and this is my horizontal uh, stabilizer where I, I sort of tried this on my other wing, in my sport wing, and you know I cut them off and I put them on, I cut them off and put them on, and I found out they fly much better when th there, there's sort of a piece, a slot missing in here, and there's a thinner piece in here that an ends up acting like, uh, uh, well, a side rudder, if you will, you know, but a horizontal rudder, um, and you know, I can't think of anything right now. But if I do, I'll probably send. Uh, I'll probably make another video and send that off to you. Now this video is probably going to be exclusive to you guys. I don't know. I might make it open to the public later on if they're interested in helping uh, in, in sort of building something like this. But I want to get the the final details all ironed out now. Uh, you'll you'll find out this one right here. The wing is actually two pieces, and I had them right here. I sort of taped the, the ends together. I flip them over like that and they sort of go inside, one on top and one on the bottom right here, this wing. Let me see, so they're open like this, I tape them together. This wing actually goes into here. And this is the main fuselage slash main wing, you know. This folds over once that's glued in on that side, it folds over on here like this. You'll see this is where it kind of goes into that edge right here. And this is just the uh, horizontal stabilizing piece that completes the end of the wing, which makes it, makes it look more like a uh, the B2. This piece right here, here's your elevon. This goes in like this. This is uh, this comes in at 45 degrees. This is the dragon portion of the elevon, and of course this is your little piece right there that goes inside in the center to act as a little wedge to guide you to make that 45 degree angle. All right. Uh, most importantly, the center of gravity, yeah, and uh, you know you can also make it a, an option. I'll leave it up to you guys. You can make it so that it's got the twisty dowel rod that goes down the center right here, or that goes down the wing. I happen to like that better because it looks better, and it can, you can keep the servos way inside here, and just sort of hide them. <clears throat> the other option would be to, you know, I could cut this and sink this servo all the way inside the wing, but out of laziness, I didn't. Um, The center of gravity is where this blue tip is. I'm a tail heavy kind of guy because I like stuff to uh, be pretty maneuverable. Center of gravity is oh about eight and a half inches. Seems to be about the sweet spot. You know, you can go all the way back to nine inches, where was, which is where I run mine at at nine inches. Back from the tip over here of the the wing cord, I guess, and um, I guess all the way to eight and a quarter inches or eight inches going forward if you want to make it more for like slope type flying and make it a little bit nose heavier-ish. Uh, the whole thing is about 41 inches all the way across. I'm not going to pull it out because I got one arm in the camera and one arm in the tape. Uh, but uh, I guess it was uh, it was 41 inches only because I, um, I was 41 years old. I'm still 41 when I made this thing. Uh, Alright, uh, any other questions? I just have a standard 2212 motor on this thing with a 6x4 prop. Uh, and it seems to cruise pretty quickly at about 70, 75-ish miles an hour. And, you know, it, it handles, uh, I've taken it up to 20, 25 gusts, uh, mile an hour gusts of wind. No problem at all. All right, so uh, if you got any questions, please don't hesitate to email me. Um, I'm not sure how well this canopy will fit under there. Because, like I said, I did make it smaller, so it's barely going to squeeze the battery in there. And the battery has to be sunk in by cutting this piece over here where where it normally sits into and it goes all the way down to the very bottom, I mean, uh, 
uh, it goes down, what's this thing? This is one, two, three layers. It goes down all the way to the first layer. So you're essentially going to cut two foam layers off the top over here. Uh, and then uh, this is going to be much shorter over here. Okay, so this is about what's like three quarters of an inch. It's going to be shut down. It's going to be sunk down to about a quarter of an inch. I just want everything to be much, much lower up here in the front. Okay. All right, uh, I'm, I'm hitting ten minutes. Peace out.